Good morning, how are you? Good evening, wherever you are. This is a day that the Lord has made and we are happy to be back. All right, now, we are looking at Genesis chapter 23, leadership lessons from Genesis chapter 23. And if you're there, we can read. Sarah lived 127 years. These were the years of the life of Sarah and Sarah died at Kiriath Abba, that is Hebron. In the land of Canaan, and Abraham went in to mourn for Sarah and to weep for her. And Abraham rose up from before his dead and said to the Hittites, I am a sojourner or a foreigner and, and a, a, among you. Give me property among you for a, for a burying place that I may bury my dead out of my sight. The Hittites answered him, Hear us, my Lord, you are a prince of God among us. Bury your dead in the choicest of our tombs. None of us will withhold from you his tomb to hinder you from burying your dead. Abram rose and bowed to the Hittites, the people of the land, and he said to them, If you are willing that I should bury my dead out of my sight, hear me and entreat for me Ephron, the son of Zohar, that he may give me the cave of Machpelah, which he owns. It is at the end of his field. For the full price, let him give it to me in your presence as property for a burying place. Now Ephron was sitting among the Hittites, and Ephron the Hittite answered Abraham in the hearing of the Hittites of all who went in at the gate of his city. No, my Lord, hear me. I give you the field, and I give you the cave that is in it. In the sight of the sons of my people, I give it to you, bury your dead. Then Abraham bowed down before the people of the land, and he said to Ephron, in the hearing of the people of the land, But if you will hear me, I give the price of the field, accept it from me, that I may bury my dead there. Ephron answered Abraham, My Lord, listen to me, a piece of land worth four hundred shekels of silver. What is that between you and me? Bury your dead. Abraham listened to Ephron, and Abraham weighed out for Ephron the silver that he had named in the hearing of the Hittites, four hundred shekels of silver, according to the weights current among the merchants. So the field of Ephron in Machpelah, which was to the east of Mamre, the field with the cave, that was in it, and all the trees that were in the field, throughout its whole area, was made over to Abraham as a possession in the presence of the Hittites, before all who went in at the gate of his city. After this, Abraham buried Sarah his wife in the cave of the field of Machpelah, east of Mamre, that is Hebron, in the land of Canaan. The field and the cave that is in it were made over to Abraham as property for a burying place by the Hittites. Now, guys, this is another wonderful uh, chapter. Though wonderful, but it is full of pain and, and full of, you know, all this loss and mourning. So, our lessons today from this chapter are, are going to be interesting because what do we learn, uh, what, what leadership lessons do we learn from such a chapter? And that is what I want to dive into. And as leaders, it is important to understand that there are lessons all around us in life. Even practically living our lives is also a lesson. As a leader, every moment is a leadership moment for you. Okay? And so it's important to understand. And I want to give approximately seven points, six to seven points that we can learn about leadership from this text. And so lesson number one, Dealing with loss and mourning. How do we deal? Because in this chapter we see that Abraham is dealing with loss in his life. He has lost his wife and this is not a wonderful moment. And I know that there are many people today who are watching and you have lost, you have a first loss in one way or another. Sometimes you lose those that we love. Sometimes you lose things. Sometimes you lose People And Abraham had lost his wife, Sarah. And so Abraham's grief over Sarah, uh, Sarah's death, 
begins to highlight for us the importance of acknowledging loss and mourning as leaders we when we lose someone we we pretend sometimes to be strong but it is important to understand that leadership isn't about suppressing emotions but it is dealing with them in a healthy manner just because we are leaders does not make us immune from loss sometimes it will happen and we have to deal with it in a healthy manner so leaders must navigate how we apply this by learning that we must navigate personal grief with the, uh, with compassion and maturity as leaders whether this grief is personal or communal or collective we must learn how to navigate it i have had people very close to me who have lost very close people and i have been there to mourn with them to stand with them and i can tell you i have also lost close people in my life and it is not a wonderful place for anyone to be but as a leader i have to process it in a different way so we have to treat that point with compassion and maturity and navigate it understanding that such moments of vulnerability can strengthen our connection with others it is in those moments of vulnerability it is in those moments of mourning it is in those moments of grief that we are able to connect to real the realities around us that we are also able to connect with other people and so as leaders we have a responsibility to mourn but also to uh, to exercise and navigate loss in a healthy healthy way just as we see abram is doing now this also teaches us that every one of us will come to the end of their lives it doesn't matter how close we are to god this is one of the things that we must begin to accept that at some point in our lives we will go to heaven if you believe in jesus we will go to heaven and we will live this earth through death if jesus tarries we will be old and god will give us a full life the second lesson we learn is dignity and respect in negotiation we learn from genesis 23 that abraham was negotiating with the hittites for a burial site but this negotiation was marked by mutual respect and politeness as you see even as we are reading abraham was bowing to the hittites and then speaking and bowing again and then speaking which uh, signifies the politeness that that went into it he was humble he was requesting to purchase the land but he was requesting that in a very humble way and in humility rather than asserting his power or wealth because abraham was rich and he was very rich and he would have asserted his power he would have taken whatever land he wanted by force but in this case uh, he did not do it because he was a man of integrity a great leader and so what we learn from this uh is that we must conduct negotiations as leaders and interactions with others respectfully and humbly even when we have the upper hand against these other people this will help us to build strong respectful relationships and enhances our capability or a leader's capability so we must begin to respect other people even though we may be stronger than them we may hold higher positions than they do we may have more money than they than they do if you're a leader to enhance your credibility don't take things by force always get into digni- uh, dignified and respectful negotiations then number 3 the lesson we see is ethical leadership and integrity abram insisted on paying the full price for the land when the price was mentioned by ephron despite ephron offering to give it to him for free okay many of us uh, many leaders today would take things for free instead of paying and that is where ethics uh, uh, ethical leadership and integrity comes in his integrity in the transaction shows a high level of ethical Uh, leadership so what we learn from this is that as leaders we must uphold integrity in all dealings ensuring fairness and transparency because ethical leadership builds trust and long-term respect you can have 
things for free, but never accept them as a leader. Pay the full price. This is some, uh, something that we must learn, as, uh, especially in Kenya. We must teach it to the churches. We must teach it to the politicians. We must teach it to the corporate leadership. We must teach it in every aspect that we must always pay the full price. Then number four lesson that we learn is long-term vision and legacy. Now, the barrier of Sarah, because this place, is Abraham is purchasing this land so that he can bury Sarah, his wife. The barrier of Sarah in the cave of Machpelah marked the first piece of land that Abraham owned in Canaan. In other words, the land of the promise, the first portion of land that was owned by a, um, by a Hebrew or a Jew or an Israeli, who, who, you know, like Abraham, was a burial site. That was the first place that they bought. That was the first place that they owned in Canaan. So this would become eventually the promised land. This purchase was not just about Sarah. It was not just about burying Sarah. It was also about establishing a lasting legacy for his descendants. Okay, And so as leaders, we must have vision. We must think beyond the present and make decisions uh, that secure the long-term future of our organizations, our families, our people, our nations. And as leaders, especially in politics, we must, in pol uh, politicians, must think about tomorrow, think about the future, but not just think about it, act on it. Do things that secure our future as a country. So a clear focus on legacy helps guide strategic decision making. So long-term vision and legacy. Number five lesson that we learn here is practical problem solving in difficult times. Practical problem solving in difficult times. So what we see is that in the midst of his grief, Abraham still managed to solve a practical issue of finding a burial place for Sarah. He did not allow his emotions to prevent him from taking necessary action. And this is a man who was emotionally intelligent, in my view. He was able to, uh, to, to control his emotions. He was able to prevent his emotions from doing, from, from going overboard and was able to control it so that he can focus on the task ahead. Now, the loss of a spouse is perhaps the deepest loss for any human being. And Abraham was no different. He was a human being, but he was able to, be, to remain focused on this difficult time. So, as leaders, we are often faced with challenges during emotional or difficult times. Effective leaders balance emotional responses with practical problem solving, ensuring that essential tasks are handled efficiently. And so we must keep going. It doesn't matter what we are facing. And as I said in the last video, we are facing, we will face challenges as leaders. Even right now as I speak, there are some of you who are facing difficult times, but you've got to keep going. You've got to keep moving. You've got to keep making proper decisions. And number six lesson, effective communication and diplomacy is what we learn. Effective communication and diplomacy. Now, Abraham communicated effectively with the Hittites and he showed respect and clarity in his intentions. He was not confused. He was tactful. He acknowledged their generosity while clearly stating his desire to purchase the land. Tact is important. Be tactful sometimes. Be diplomatic. One thing that I've learned with diplomacy is that it will break rocks that you will find hard to break when you try to apply force. Diplomacy moves like the water. Diplomacy takes shape of whatever it is that is going on. So as leaders, we must learn how to communicate our intentions clearly, but most importantly, to communicate those intentions diplomatically in a way 
that is sellable, okay? Particularly in high insensitive or high stakes situations. Good communication builds understanding and helps navigate complex negotiations smoothly. That is why wars do not solve anything. Fighting does not solve anything. We must be diplomatic in every situation that we find ourselves in. And the last lesson that we learn is valuing relationships and community. Now, Abraham was not a Hittite, but his interaction with the Hittites showed a sense of belonging and mutual respect. In other words, we must learn how to be, uh, how to respect each other and how to identify the things that bring us together more than the things that divide us. We must accept ourselves as we are. Now, he was known as a mighty prince among them, demonstrating the importance of maintaining good relationships with the communities around us. As Kenyans, we must focus on what brings us together than focus on what divides us. We must love one another. We must see the common good. What are those things that we are good at? Why do we always focus on the things that divide us? And so leadership is focusing on the common things that we can do together. Don't focus too much on what you cannot do together. Find out those things, common good, and begin to make partnerships and connections with people. Uh, so leaders, as leaders, we should cultivate positive relationships with those around us. We should value community and seek to lead in a way that honors mutual respect because strong community or strong community ties bring trust in support and support in times of need. In other words, being a good leader is understanding that you need other people and other people need you to understand that we all need one another. And that way, we can go far. We can do whatever we want and we can achieve so many things. Now, to summarize this whole thing, Genesis 23, uh, it offers leadership lessons on handling grief, negotiating with integrity, maintaining ethical standards, uh, focusing on long-term goals, solving problems practically, communicating effectively, and valuing relationships. And these lessons that we have seen, they highlight the importance of leading with dignity, with respect, and foresight, even in challenging circumstances. And lastly, it teaches us to live in harmony with each other in our communities. Thank you, and I pray that the Lord will continue to teach us these lessons. And may the Lord bless you and keep you. Amen. Amen.